Erin, you've really aged. Women over 40 are pretty much done for, aren't they? I think so too. Compared to the moms of other kids in my class, she's the oldest and it's embarrassing. Yeah, I get it, I get it. Mom doesn't need to come to school events anymore. It's better if only dad comes. I totally understand how you feel, Paul. To be honest, I regret marrying her. Right. Recently, my husband Joseph and our son, Paul, have been having these kinds of conversations right in front of me. I am Erin, 42 years old. I live with my husband, who's five years younger than me, and our 10-year-old son. Joseph works for a cosmetics company. Both my parents have passed away, but Joseph's are still alive. Joseph's brother and his family live with his parents. They have five kids, so his parents are too busy with their grandchildren to pay much attention to us. In a way, it's easier than them meddling too much, so I don't really mind. Joseph used to be very caring and kind when we got married, but now he treats me like I'm just middle-aged. Paul, growing up seeing this, has started to speak rudely to me, imitating Joseph. No matter how much I scold him, he doesn't listen because Joseph just loves it off. But Dad says it's good to be honest about everything. It's not nice to say things that hurts others. Didn't your teacher scold you recently for that? Paul recently made a girl in his class cry by calling her ugly. I had just been contacted and scolded by his teacher about it. It happens too often. I blame his father, who never scolds him. They're truly like father, like son. But Paul is only 10. I worry about what he'll become in the future, if he is like this now. Even as an adult, it hurts to hear such things. Being called old or ugly every day by the only two family members have really gets me down. I quit my job to get married and raise Paul. But once he started elementary school, I took a part-time job at a supermarket. Actually, that's where I met Joseph. We started talking after seeing each other there a few times, and that led to dating and then marriage. I used to be a full-time employee at the main branch of the supermarket, but now I work part-time at a branch within walking distance from our home. Lately, I've been working weekends too, and the manager is happy about it. Are you sure it's okay? What about your husband and son? It's a big help that you can work on weekends. Yes, my husband takes care of our son. Your husband sounds great. That's the usual response when I say that. Indeed, Joseph often takes Paul out on weekends. But it's more like they're treating me as a nuisance than looking after him. Aaron doesn't need to come with us. Yeah, it's more fun just with Dad. It'd be embarrassing if people thought Aaron was part of the family. I don't want people to think my mom is someone as ugly as her. That's what they say about me. So he's far from a good husband. If you give me more allowance, I might go out with you, Paul sometimes says. That must be Joseph's influence. I already give you a monthly allowance. It's not nearly enough. Telling him to spend it more wisely doesn't help. He almost always spends it all on the same day he gets it. It goes on snacks and games, just frivolous things. An ugly woman should stay home alone. It's mom's fault. She doesn't give me enough allowance. Saying that, Joseph and Paul left again today. I've been working on weekends lately, but the manager told me to take a break and relax with my family for once, and I couldn't refuse bluntly. I felt too embarrassed to admit to him that I was being ostracized by Joseph and Paul. After finishing the cleaning and laundry, I let out a big sigh. Having nothing else to do, I thought about going shopping for the first time in a while. A little stroll outside would be a nice change of pace. I enjoyed some window shopping, but then realized I didn't particularly want anything. Before I knew it, I found myself in front of a restaurant we used to visit often when Paul was still in preschool. Back then, 
Paul didn't talk back like he does now, and Joseph was still kind. I almost teared up thinking about those times. No matter how fondly I recall the past, it won't change the present. I left the place with that thought. A bit further away, I heard a familiar voice and turned around. What? There were Joseph and Paul with an unfamiliar woman, looking like a happy family, entering the restaurant without noticing me. Who was that woman? Paul was smiling at her, a smile he had never shown me. Back home, the image of Paul's smile kept flashing in my mind. Their close behavior didn't seem like they had just met yesterday. Had Joseph and Paul been meeting that woman on their outings? Then the worst thought crossed my mind. Was she Joseph's? When Joseph and Paul returned home that night, they acted as usual. I guess meeting that woman had become routine for Paul. So I decided to ask Paul first. Wanting to know what Joseph told him about her. Hey, Paul. I saw you with dad and a woman I don't know yesterday. Who is she? Ah, you saw? She's much prettier than mom, right? Dad's friend? No, she's dad's girlfriend. What? That's what dad said. He told me to keep it a secret from you, mom. But now that you've seen it, can't help it. If you were as pretty as her, I'd have gone out with you too. I was speechless at Paul's words, smiling, and shocked that Joseph had brazenly introduced his affair to Paul. I couldn't pretend not to know anymore. That night, I confronted Joseph with what I saw and what Paul said. Planning to discuss it away from Paul, but Joseph said there was no need to hide it since Paul knew everything already. So we talked in the living room. Paul sat on a kitchen chair, silently listening. I had no choice but to ask about the woman. Joseph admitted to the affair without hesitation. I was actually thinking of talking about it soon. What do you mean? Layla is crazy about me and desperately wants to marry me. To do that, I need to divorce you. Layla is 12 years younger than you, Erin. She's 30 and beautiful. Anyone would say she's the better choice, right? But taking your child to meet your mistress? What are you thinking? I thought it'd be better for Paul to get used to his new mom. What? Hey, Paul, what do you want? To live with this woman or your new mom? Which one? I obviously want to live with Dad and my new mom. The nuisance should just leave. Paul! I felt like being hit in the head with a hammer. I never thought Paul would say such things to me. But this house was left to me by my father. I have no reason to leave. I was about to say that when Joseph spoke first. Paul, this house was built by mom's dad. So if we divorce, we won't leave here anymore. Is that so? But, Paul, do you want to live here? In this old-fashioned shack? What will we do then? We have the new mom's house. We can live in that beautiful apartment? That's right. That will be better for Paul, wouldn't it? Of course. So, old mom and the old house, we don't need them anymore. You got it, Paul. Just like my son. Joseph's mistress had apparently lost her parents too but she owned a beauty salon with her inheritance and was quite well off. Joseph had become close to her after making a deal to supply his company's cosmetics to her salon, and he was planning to quit his job and become an executive at her salon after divorcing me and marrying her. I was astonished that things had progressed that far. If Paul prefers Joseph's mistress over me, there's nothing I can do. I agreed to the divorce, exhausted and without the will to hold back. Of course, I demanded alimony, but Joseph just laughed. If it can be settled with money, it's cheap. Layla will pay. This way, I can finally be free of you, Erin. 
Paul left alongside Joseph. After I signed the divorce papers, Joseph and Paul left looking happy. Watching them go, I felt my heart growing colder. Had I become such a boring person that they could look down on me like this? I thought I had tried my best for Joseph and Paul. Feeling pathetic that this was the result, I decided to forget them. There was no point in staying down. It was foolish to waste any more of my life for them. I was glad I had a part-time job. Having a place to work felt incredibly reassuring. And three months after the divorce, I was offered a full-time position. I was so happy. Discarded like trash by Joseph and Paul, finding a place that recognized and needed me was a relief. I decided to work hard and live my life seriously. Five years passed, and one day, my doorbell rang insistently. When I rushed to answer, two shabby men were standing there. At first, I thought they were beggars. But who would beg at someone's house these days? Then the younger man said, Mom, I've missed you. Who are you? It's me, Paul. I miss you too, Aaron. It was Joseph and Paul. They had become thin, haggard, and unkempt, completely different from five years ago. Paul, who was ten then, was now fifteen, a ninth grader. Teenagers grow fast. I wouldn't have recognized him under normal circumstances, but why were they here now, looking like this? The house has really changed. It's so impressive now. Aaron, where did you hide all this money? That's none of your business. Hey, let's get back together. What nonsense are you talking about? Apparently, they had tried to rely on Joseph's family, bought five grandchildren the eldest in college, it was the most financially demanding time for them. They couldn't afford to help and didn't want to be burdened by Joseph and Paul, so they were turned away. Mom, help me. What? Who's your mom? Mom, don't you recognize me? It's Paul. Have you forgotten your own son? Well, I don't know. As I said before, I don't have a son. Did you need something? Aaron, are you still holding a grudge about what happened five years ago? It's all in the past, isn't it? The past? Deep down, you wanted us to come back, right? You've been waiting, haven't you? Hearing this, I realized that I had barely thought of them at all over this five years. They had already become strangers to me. Aren't you happily remarried to that young, wealthy woman? Can't you see how far we look that? That's not the case. Even if he said that, it was none of my concern. I had no interest in their appearance or situation. Then, perhaps seeking sympathy, Joseph began to cry and talk. He explained how Lila's beauty salon had gone bankrupt in its third year, how they were being sued because they've taken high payments for treatments in advance, and how there were unpaid wages and lawsuits from former employees. He kept talking, unasked. Layla was working nights, but blamed Joseph for not doing enough sales, forcing him to work part-time at a grocery store and as a day laborer at construction sites to pay up debts. Paul was burdened with all the household chores, allowed only one meal a day, and told to drop out and work. So what? How is any of that my concern? Help us! Layla hasn't been home for a week. All my earnings go to debt payments. And without Layla's income, we have nothing to eat. I don't care about your problems. I always preferred you to her. Dad betrayed you, so it's understandable you're angry, but I'm your son. Erin, are you betraying me? I was just a kid taken away by Dad. Please, Mom, let me stay here. I want to go to high school and I'll use my allowance wisely. Allowance? To think they expected me to feed them, send Paul to school, and even give him an allowance? And not a single word of apology from either of them? Like father, like son. I am your son, mom. You can't abandon me. 
a mother can ignore her struggling son. Paul, you planning to come back here alone? Well, dad's divorced from you, so he's a stranger now, but it's different from me. Do you even know the truth, Paul? The truth? Paul is just like me, a stranger to Aaron. Even if Paul wants to live comfortably here, I won't let him do that. What do you mean? Paul's biological mother had passed away shortly after he was born. For a while, Joseph's parents took care of him, but they couldn't manage with their own young kids. Eventually, they gave up. That's when... Joseph, with baby Paul, started coming to our supermarket. I felt sorry for him and ended up marrying him on Paul's first birthday. I thought of Paul as my own son and decided to raise him with care. Initially, Joseph was grateful and helped around the house, and I was glad to be married. But as Paul started elementary school, Joseph stopped helping and started saying, You're cold to him because he's not your flesh and blood. Whenever I scolded Paul for misbehavior, it became harder to scold Paul after hearing that so often. And so, Paul became a child who spoke rudely and looked down on others. I tried my best to correct his behavior, but Joseph's tacit approval only made Paul more disrespectful. Moreover, after Paul chose Joseph's mistress over me as his mother, any maternal feelings I had for him had vanished. That's why I felt no sympathy for Paul now, pleading for help while arguing with Joseph. I realized I could never be his mother. Maybe we were never that close after all. Some families are close despite not being blood-related, but I couldn't be that way. And I didn't want to become his mother again. That was my honest feeling, and there was nothing I could do about it. Can you too, who are unrelated to me, stop standing in front of my house in such a shabby state? It's a nuisance, so please leave. That's harsh. What if at that time? What? Five years ago, if you had said you wanted to live with me, even without blood ties, I was ready to go through any hardship to raise you. Mom, you chose to leave me first, Paul, so I am no longer your mother. Don't come here again, and you too, Joseph. At my words, Paul and Joseph both slumped their shoulders. Then as I said those words, my husband Brian came home. What's wrong? Welcome home. Erin, you remarried? Yes, two years ago. Who are they? Some people from the past, but they were just leaving. I had told Brian about my divorce and my son. He probably realized that these two were my former family. Without saying a word to them, Brian turned his gaze back to me. I'm home. What's for dinner? Your favorite meat and potatoes. Looking forward to it. Let's go inside. You're done here, right? Brian put his hand on my back and glared at them. They stood there stunned. But I entered the house with Brian, closing the door behind us. Later, Joseph's wife was arrested for fraud. Apparently, as their business struggled, they pretended to use high-quality cosmetics but actually diluted them with water or switched them to cheap drugstore products, selling them as their own luxury brand. An employee who did not receive his salary filed a complaint. Joseph, being in charge of oversight, couldn't escape liability for damages. Paul, though he graduated from middle school, didn't go to high school and was working part-time somewhere. Joseph came asking for money, but of course, I turned him down. Brian is a department head at the supermarket's headquarters. Brian, too, is remarried. His previous wife passed away from illness three years into their marriage. Over 20 years ago, they had no children. I think I wouldn't have remarried if Brian had children. It's not because I dislike parenting. I couldn't properly raise the only child I had. I didn't get to see him grow up. That's why I thought I couldn't be a mother again. Brian understands my feelings. 
When I said I wanted to live in the house left by my parents, he agreed and renovated it for us. He's always thoughtful and kind, and I want to stay by his side forever.